Hello, Mishpucha. It's Courtney, America's Jewish Mother. Welcome back to my channel. It's Friday, so that means Friday Reads. That is what we do here, right? Um, so I finished two books this week. I also DNF'd a book, and I'm currently reading four books. And then, just as a fun little bonus at the end of this, I have a little mini book haul. It's not very many books. It's only like four. So, um, so let's go. So I'm going to start with the book that I DNF'd, which was The Mandelbaum Gate by Muriel Spark. Um, this was the February pick for the Barter Hordes Backlist Book Club. Um, and I read over half of this book. I was about 60% of the way through it when I DNF'd. I got through the entire part one, but I just was not enjoying the story at all. I did not find the characters compelling. I was not entertained by the story. This is supposed to be a sort of thriller, in a sense, um, but there's nothing thrilling about it. Um, it literally says on the back, an adventure of espionage and abduction from pilgrimage to flight. Yeah, not exciting. <laughs> Not near as exciting as you would think based on that description. So um, this book revolves around two main characters. Um, one, Barbara Vaughn, who is Jewish. She's actually Jewish because Jews go by matrilineal descent and her mother was Jewish. So she's Jewish. She converted to Catholicism. Um, and she's visiting Israel and she wants to go into Jordan, but... If, she, if they find out that she's actually Jewish, um, they're going to think that she's a spy and she's going to, um, you know, maybe be taken into custody or something like that. Um, so she's the main character. And then the other main character is this guy named Freddie, I don't even remember his last name, Hamilton maybe? Fr Freddie something. So both of them are British. Um, and yeah, it's just... They're, like, neither of them has any personality, and I just feel like, with the exception of the fact that Barbara is a woman and Freddie is a man, and Barbara seems more interested in sex and relationships than Freddie does, otherwise I would say they're basically the same person. Um, so yeah, I just didn't find either of them particularly compelling as characters, and yeah, I'm not excited, I was not excited about the plot of this either, and so yeah, I decided that I would just not finish it instead of slogging through 150 more pages of something that I was not enjoying, because this is not exactly a short book, it's close to 400 pages, and yeah, so DNF, and on to hopefully better books. Um, so, a book that I finished this week but can't really say anything about is Catherine Cho's memoir, Inferno, um, which is about her experience with postpartum psychosis. I read this for the Octofinals round of the Booktube Prize. I have recorded my thoughts about it elsewhere, so that will go up um, once the quarterfinals round is underway, but I can't say anything else about it now except for the fact that I read Inferno. Um, so the other book I finished this week was Akwaki Amezi's The Death of Vivek Oji. Um, I read this for Scott and Nell from Gunpowder, Gunpowder Fiction and Plots Read Under the Bed book group, um, and I quite enjoyed this. I ended up giving this book four stars. I had never read anything by Amezi before um, I read this book, but I'm now interested in going back and picking up their first novel, Freshwater, um, at some point. So the death of Vivek Oji pretty much centers around what you would expect given the title. So at the very beginning, you find out that Vivek Oji has died, and then it sort of traces um, people involved in Vivek's life and how Vivek ended up dying. Um, and I will say that it did have kind of a twist that I didn't see coming, and there were parts of it that were um, quite emotionally moving and powerful. Um, I did think, and oh, and also the writing is, is, is very nice. Um, I think Amezi has a real talent for creating tension in a scene. Um, 
Like, there's a, basically there's a scene between Vivek and another character where, you know, for a while I was thinking, God, it feels like there's this sexual tension building, and then that's what happened, <laughs> right? Um, but, you know, and Messi does that without, you know, without being obvious about it, but I think it's a real talent that Amezi is able to create a sense of sexual tension without having either of the characters, you know, sort of actively thinking about their attraction to each other or anything like that. Um, so I thought the, I thought the writing was, um, was quite good in that respect. I did think there were too many characters, <laughs> so um, this was about, I think, 175 pages on ebook, so it's, it's basically a novella, um, or, yeah, so I, I'm just going to call it a novella, because it's not, you know, it's not really, um, it's not a super long read. Um, but yeah, for, for something that was that short, I did, I just felt like there were too many characters to keep track of, and, and some people I understood why they were there, and other people I feel like could have been, you know, cut from the story. Um, without losing a lot, especially because um, it is such a short amount of space and you do kind of want to have like a tighter focus on the main people and events that occur. Uh, but yeah, otherwise I thought it was really good and again I will look forward to um, picking up Amezi's Freshwater to read at some point. So yes, four stars. Um, so on to my current read. So I am currently reading, since I finished Catherine Cho's Inferno, I'm now reading another book for the Booktube Prize, which is Jessica Goudeau's After the Last Border. And this tells the story, as far as I can um, gather so far, it tells the story of two women who come to the United States as refugees, one from Myanmar and the other one from Syria. Um, so there's sort of an interweaving of their stories, um, as well as some information about how the United States refugee resettlement policies have evolved over time. Um, so I'm about a quarter of the way into that, but I can't really say anything else about it except that I'm currently reading that right now. Um, I'm also currently reading Octavia Butler's Parable of the Sower with Lindsay of Lindsay's Book Life. Um, we are very close to the halfway point in this book, um, and I think we're both enjoying it. So far, we're finding it very sort of quick-paced reading, um, and it's engaging, and we're interested to see what happens. Um, so that's good. So this is like a good, engaging, pretty fast-paced read. Um, so yeah, that's, that's about all I'm going to say about that right now. Um, oh, I forgot to show you this book. This is Jessica Goudeau's After the Last Border. I actually have this as a print copy from the library, so yeah. Um, also, still buddy reading Moby Dick with Melissa of Fully Booked. Um, we are over the halfway point in Moby Dick, so that's very exciting. Um, so I think we're on schedule to finish this by probably the end of March. Um, so still enjoying that. And I've also started reading The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. because it's been getting all this buzz on Booktube and I saw that it was available as an ebook for my library. So I picked it up and then promptly proposed an impromptu buddy read to Scott and Nell of Gunpowder Fiction and Plot um, because I had heard one of them mention it recently. And so they agreed, so now we're buddy reading that and we're going to check in um, over the weekend. On the first half, I need to seriously catch up as far as the profits is concerned, so that will be the bulk of my reading for the next two days until I reach the check-in point. Um, but I am interested in that so far. I'm not super far in, but the writing is quite nice, um, and I'm interested to see how the story will unfold. Um, so that's everything that I finished this week, or I'm currently reading. I was originally going to pick up River Solomon's The Deep, but when I saw that The Prophets was available, I decided that I would rather read that instead. And I'm still interested in reading The Deep at some point, but it's going to be later this year as opposed to, you know, sometime in the next week or two. Um, okay, so on to the book haul portion of this. So I have four books to show you. Um, so one of them was a direct recommendation from Hannah at Hannah's Books, 
which is With Roots in Heaven, One Woman's Passionate Journey into the Heart of Her Faith by Tear Rabbi Tears of Firestone. Um, so Hannah talked about two books. Sorry, that's Char on the background with her Tiger Ball. Um, <laughs> Hannah talked recently in, in one of her videos about two Jewish feminist books. And, you know, as soon as I heard Jewish feminist, obviously my ears perked right up. Um, so I couldn't pass up an opportunity to get one of these. So um, this says, at age 17, Tears of Firestone left the oppressive home of her Orthodox Jewish parents and set off on a spiritual odyssey. Um, this is a, an account of her evolution from a rebellious young seeker to a renegade rabbi. Um, and I want to say she's a rabbi in renewal. Judaism, maybe? I could be wrong about that, but I guess we'll see whenever I actually pick this up to read it. Um, so yeah, definitely excited to get to this at some point. I don't know when exactly I'll get to it, but hopefully later this year. Um, I also bought W.G. Seabald's Austerlitz, which I'm hoping to do as a buddy read with Mark Nash at some point in the second half of the year. Um, I've never read anything by Seabald before, but I've heard high praise from several people, so I'm excited to read this. Um, sorry, again, that's Char with the Tiger Ball. Um, this says, Austerlitz is the story of a man's search for the answer to his life central riddle, a small child when he comes to England on a kinder transport in the summer of 1939. Jacques Austerlitz is told nothing of his real family by the Welsh Methodist minister and his wife who raised him. When he is a much older man, fleeting memories return to him and obeying an instinct he only dimly understands Austerlitz follows their trail back to the world he left behind half a century before. There, faced with the void at the heart of 20th century Europe, he struggles to rescue his heritage from oblivion. So yes, that definitely sounds interesting. Um, and looking forward to reading this, hopefully in the second half of this year, with Mark. Um, next book I got is Gender Queer by Maya Kobabe. This is a graphic memoir. Um, I've heard both Greg of Supposedly Fun and Lindsay of Lindsay's Book Life um, talk about this book. And since I feel like reading trans and non-binary authors is sort of a blind spot in my own reading, I'm attempting to remedy that slightly this year. Um, so I bought this to learn more about the experience of non-binary people. Um, so this says, in gender queer, Maya Kobabe has crafted an intensely cathartic autobiography about ear path to identifying as non-binary and asexual and coming out to ear family and society. By addressing questions about gender identity, what it means and how to think about it, the story also doubles as a much needed useful and touching guide. So yes, definitely looking forward to getting to this at some point. I think I might save this for summertime. Um, we'll, we'll see, but I'll definitely get to it at some point later this year. And then the last book I hauled is Dostoevsky's The Idiot, translated by Richard Pevier and Larissa Balachonsky. So I've heard Steve Donahue talk before about Russian translations of Russian classics, and I know he does not care for Pevier and Balachonsky's particular translation style. Um, respectfully, I disagree. I quite like Pevier and Balachonsky. Um, and, you know, if I pick up a translation of a Russian classic, I'm probably going to go for them before I pick up anybody else. I have also read um, a translation of Crime and Punishment by David Macduff that I quite liked. Um, but I really love Peter and Balakonsky's translation of Anna Karenina, especially. Um, so, yeah. So, and this book, I, I have not managed to get to Dostoevsky's The Brothers Karamazov yet. One day I'm hoping to get to it, but The Idiot, although it is lengthy, um, is not quite as intimidating as The Brothers K, so um, I'm hoping to get to this at some point later this year. After his great portrayal of a guilty man in Crime and Punishment, Dostoevsky set out in The Idiot to portray a man of pure innocence. The 26-year-old Prince Mishkin, following a stay of several years in a Swiss sanatorium, <laughs> sorry, again, char with her tiger ball. Um, returns to Russia to collect an inheritance and be among people. Even before he reaches home, he meets the dark Rogozhin, a rich merchant's son, whose obsession with the beautiful Nastasia Filipovna eventually draws all three of them into a tragic denouement. 
In Petersburg, the prince finds himself a stranger in a society obsessed with money, power, and manipulation. Scandal escalates to murder as Dostoevsky traces the surprising effect of this positively beautiful man on the people around him, leading to a final scene that is one of the most powerful in all of world literature. Um, hello, that was super dramatic. <laughs> so yeah, definitely really excited to get to this at some point based on the summary blurb alone. Um, okay, so that is my little mini bonus book haul. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching this. If you have thoughts about any of these books, um, stuff that I finished reading or stuff that I'm currently reading, although not the booktube prize books, <laughs> um, but aside from those, if you have thoughts about any of these books that I read or I'm currently reading or just hauled or DNF'd or whatever, please feel free to let me know that down in the comments below. Um, I hope everyone is staying healthy and well. I hope you're doing good reading whatever you're reading, and until next time, would it kill you to call your mama?